has something to say about it. I don't know. You know, I mean, like, if Green Bay's defense lives up to the hype, eight first-round picks, and Jordan Love looks like he did in those two drives, or Sean Clifford, half-joking, maybe they are a surprise team. continues to talk about, I mean, they're going to score a bunch of points. And Jordan Addison looked really good. Almost threw high up and makes deliberate contact with the knee, upper thigh of Berha. That should have, it could have been a, a yellow card. Well, from Paul Kirk and Rangers, that's just a pleasant hello from Scott <laughs> Arfield True. because he needed some treatment. Gramaski has to exit the field, but now given the thumbs up to return. Strong Seven cave. minutes in, no score. Fernando. Yeah, strong kid, big kid. He can handle that one and, and many, many more. And, uh, and I'm sure that... He won't be anything else. Putting some pressure on. Not the frantic press from Miami. Trying to really fill the passing lanes here in the early going. Ball back to Privet. The 23-year-old Marylander. Back to his goalkeeper, Kalina. Busquets actually pushing up to the front line as they try and close the pocket. Nice work spinning away from the Mark Kriftsoff. To get a touch, and Miami gets it back at midfield. Uh, that midfield triangle, Busquets at times becomes almost the 8th or 10, where he can now set the press, depending on their organization. Long ball for Kramaski. Apple even at 37, back in time, but he's forced to knock it out. It'll be a throw-in just shy of the flag. Uh, one of the changes from the last game, to put off with great spe uh, speed and experience in a position where Messi ends up a lot of times, or Yetlin as well, done with intent obviously better coach a tactical adjustment ball back for arroyo wide for yedlin interesting to find out now with alba becoming a regular ball pinged in from busquets but it deflects off apple right back to miami yedlin still aggressive in fact even higher up the field than alba at the moment you kind of wonder who's going to cover for alba on the far side another knockdown in the midfield and a whistle from ismail elfa a free kick for Miami some 40 yards out. And it's very interesting. Let's be real honest. I mean, Messi's very, very smart, obviously. And he understands when he attracts attention, numbers. But left side might be the way to go in terms of success with Alba and Robert Taylor in 2v1 situations. Miller pushing up the far flank to Alba inside for Taylor, who's playing a little more in that inside channel today. Ball knocked back. Alba now drives in. Kramaski about 30 yards out, takes the touch, fakes the shot. Martinez, Messi, and he almost dribbles through. Kramaski flying in with a touch, appeals for a handball. One back by Miami. We'll have to wait for a stoppage. In comes Arroyo. He gets knocked down, and it will be a penalty. Yes, sir. One way or the other, Miami's going to the spot. Yeah, continuously press, and that's so impressive right now that Inter Miami takes their spots well. In terms of pressing, if they got good numbers going forward, they immediately, that three-second rule, they win their 50-50s three times, they keep balls alive, and all of a sudden, there is contact. A potential handball first with Ben Kramanski, and then a 50-50, in my opinion, on the foul against Dixon or Rojo on that right side. Well, we'll find out. Here the challenge from Apple, and he does get in the way. There is contact. VAR will take a look, and they'll actually have two things to look at. They'll first look at the Apple challenge, Fernando, and see if that is a penalty. If not, they'll go back to the potential handball. Something you pointed out with Kramaski being a big kid, he's also in a slightly different role than he has been. That last man into the box created this chance tonight. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, it's exactly the opposite of my position, but I saw the hand from here, and also I saw, like I mentioned before, Kremaski is definitely a guy that has to be on the field. I know that Tata Martino wanted to try different things with the Paraguayan Gomez last game, but we need Kremaski 90 minutes 
or more. Martinez from the spot. He's been perfect this year, including last game when Lionel Messi handed off the responsibility with a hat trick on the line. Kalina has only faced one penalty this year in MLS play, and he surrendered a goal. So for another early lead in this league's cup as the clock ticks to 11, Martinez, right heel touching the 18 inside the box, straight on with Kalina. The whistle, the lean back to his right, drives it into the corner with Kalina diving the other way. Goal for Inter Miami. Miami. It comes back to Kramaski, Thomas. Cool and collective by Joseph Martinez. I'm not so sure what it was given. The head ball more obvious than the foul, quite frankly. But hey, it's one nothing. And Joseph Martinez, again, Messi goes, you know what? You're in better form right now. Here you go. Brilliant by the big man as well. And then Joseph Martinez has found new life with Messi right now struggle obviously since he arrived here finding his form as he did with atlanta united when he broke roy lasner's record that stood for many years since 1996. david beckham applauding on the sidelines even getting a high five from posh 12th now 13th minute miami dropping back this is perhaps even more of a key can they maintain their focus and composure as heroic as the comeback was last game, they did give up four goals. Absolutely. That's why I just said that defensively, one of the reasons why they brought an Argentinian under-22 center back, because Miller and... Charlotte touching the ball inside the box, now getting pushed wide. It's our field, and stripped of the ball nicely by Alba. Out to Martinez, who gets bundled over, draws the foul. Yeah, and you go back to Sergi and, and Kamal Miller, that's an area, I think, where we need to get better. With those two players, I think that's possible. But now with new players coming in and with Ian Frey out for the season, we're very thin right there. And, yes, you cannot afford to concede four in many games and think you can still win that. So that's the lesson learned after suffering in Dallas and winning in PKs. Toto Aviles is going to be here tomorrow. It's a good, a good substitution right there. Maybe even a starting 11. Nice he's to ready. have the depth. Ball from Messi, again curling for Alba. Where have I seen that before? Flying half volley and now bouncing away. That would have been one of the world's longest give and goes, but poked away before Messi could get there. A foul against Miami in the midfield. That's very interesting. That back four, that midfield four, when the ball starts moving towards Messi, everybody tucks in. It means Lindsay, the right fullback, almost is close to the center back. Because if it breaks down by Messi, I need to go there, which gives Messi done the very simple option, which he chooses brilliantly to switch the point of attack twice now and finding Taylor or Alba coming from deep. Off to Affel. Ball back. And they'll retreat to Kalina. Look at Busi right now. <laughs> Pressing underneath Martinez and Leo Messi. From an attacking standpoint, it's a 1-2-4-1-3. Defensively, it becomes a 4-4-2. Can we press? We do. If not, Martinez, Messi, don't take part in our defending. We got two blocks of four. We deal with it. Watching that triangle in the middle and trying to figure out that formation you were talking about, Every single one of the three has spent time as the deepest man. Kramaski may be the least, but with Busquets pushing up higher than we've seen so far, Tata Martino with a wrinkle tonight. Well, not necessarily a wrinkle by Tata Martino. I think it's a wrinkle based on what's given to Sergio Busquets. And, and most teams say if we can stop Busquets and Messi, we're in good shape. Most people so, say stop Busquets before Messi. Yeah, so Busquets says, you know what? I'm going to play underneath Messi. Let's see what this guy does. He goes with me, then Arroyo is open. If I drop deep, then maybe Arroyo goes there as well. So Sergi gives Charlotte different looks right now, which makes him hard to defend. And if they stay with him, other pockets open up for Benja Kramanski and for Dixon Arroyo. Quarter hour in, off to Yedlin, drops it back on the left foot of Kripsov. So he turns and passes back to Callender. Always nice to have a keeper with feet. Touched up by Alba, but just curls across the line. Throw in for Charlotte just in the offensive half early goal again tonight for Miami 
And again, going back to your coaching days, Thomas, always a sigh of relief when you can coach with a lead. No doubt about it. And they've done that now throughout this tournament uh, very, very well. Messi actually, in the last three games, scored under eight minutes the first goal. It's not a guarantee. But now Charlotte has to respond. Do we start pressing early? Do we stay tactically in the shape because we wanted to keep the zero at least through the half? And that's very interesting to see if they're going to adjust now and go press higher and try to play the half the opponent, which they're doing right now. Miller tripped up the flag waves. A nice little tandem with Alba on that far flank. Kalina in goal. The former Ludogorets keeper beaten on the penalty. Jalen Lindsay guy you're quite familiar with. Yep. Going back to his U.S. youth days. Spent some time in Kansas City before making the jump. Privet and Melanda, two pretty big center backs with Affle on the flank. And Ashley Westwood, the captain in front. Right now, trying to figure out how to deal with this Inter-Miami. People have been trying to figure out how to deal with Messi for a couple of decades now. And coming back to your uh, comment, uh, Phil, about great calendar playing with his feet. You know that I'm coming to a recent training session, and he doesn't play goalkeeper when they play uh, in training. He usually goes to the midfield, and he's very, very good. Remember Nicky Romando, Tony Miola, another one. All goalkeepers <laughs> want to play in small-sided games and be center forwards. And Tata's done a great job in integrating these guys and have some fun games, old versus young. Foreigners against Americans. That's why I played at DC United. I'm telling you, those games are better than some of the plays with the games you played on Saturday. Marco Echeverri against Eddie Pope. Great battles. Bruce Asul. And the players love that, by the way. Falling in the first hurdle, blowing out Tata's old Atlanta. And again, going back to the animosity between the Cruz Azul ownership and management and Tata in his time with Mexico. Both of those matches had to be sweet. Then the Florida Derby in a big 3-1 win. And then the comeback against Dallas admitted they did not play well. But he said, you know, sometimes it's important to win ugly. Ball back for Callender, but he's back in time to grab it. Meanwhile, tiebreakers against Dallas in their first game. Big win against Necaxa as the Mexican teams have struggled. Then Cruz Azul in a penalty and Houston on two goals we'll talk about, including one of the strangest goals you'll ever see. A layoff for Kramaski. Alba making the run. Dishes it wide. Martinez in the middle. Messi finds a pocket. That little jog, trot, jog from Messi. And he just manages to create time and space. Ball pops up. Advantage played. Out wide. It's Kramaski, edge of the area. Taylor comes over. They'll retreat to Alba. 34 years of age now. Nearly 100 caps. And a proud Papa again, which is one reason why his arrival was delayed. Over to Miller. Back to Alba. Taylor again on the inside. Dropping back Lindsay Inside for Martinez, but he thought Messi was behind. Well, another reason they call it a dummy. Westwood starting to break the other way. Nice down the middle for Josviak. The pole trying to get around Yedlin. Good. He puts on the brakes, but he kept going. And the ball stops for Inter-Miami. A great recovery, by the way, by Yetlin the fastest speed wise out of that big four so great recovery in particular because Yetland's starting position is high so he read that quite quick and was able to get back and stop the transition the counter Messi they tried to knock him down he just kept running now find space on that left wide for Kramaski Martinez in the middle trailing run for Messi but the pass leads him a bit much Westwood with the intercept Miami starting to tighten the screws, and another good stop by Kripsov. Taylor tries to control. Yedlin steps up to win the crossfield pass, though. It's Martinez to Messi. Kramaski on the run, scooping it for the youngster, but he put the brakes on, not recognizing the pass was open. What was that line Ray used to say about Nene Kubias? When I'm not looking at you, expect the pass. Yep. And we see the array, the skill set of Messi. One touch switch in the point of deck. His dribble penetration. This scoop right now, which doesn't arrive, but sooner or later will. And every game, I think there's maybe three wild factors. There's 10 plus. Long ball forward for Swiderski, but the flag comes up to bring it back for offside. That it's a second time. And, and when you start pushing numbers forward, 
the two center backs got to make a decision. Do we step collectively for the offsides? Do we keep playing in front of us? And, and you're guided by if there's pressure on the ball, you can step. No pressure. Porter could get his head up. Now we got to keep playing in front of us. And that's where Kamal Miller and Sergi really need to be able to be on the same page. Tata Martino just across that technical area. All black tonight for the Inter-Miami coach. Meanwhile, with the white polo and jeans, Christian Latanzio. Chin in his hand, looking out, trying to look for a weakness. Dallas exploited a few, but to this point, a little more solid tonight in the back for Miami. Remember, they had the early lead there, too, and surrendered it. I'm sure Tonto Martino will remind them of that at the half. 22nd oh. minute. By the way, that recovery from Yedlin reminds me of the one from uh, Miller last Sunday when he was able to got uh, Ferreira that he was almost in front of our uh, calendar. Now that was a one-on-none. Yeah. Nice tackle by Yedlin. Pings it off of Yosfiak. Looks like it should be a Miami throw. The fans see it one way, but the boys in red see it some way else. So Charlotte with a throw in for Athol about 20 yards down near side. In for Bronico. Another Maryland kid through UNC Charlotte. So almost a homegrown for the 28-year-old midfielder from Chicago. Apple inside. Monaco back. Malanda. Apple near side. Josviak. Apple. Nice work in a tight space, but they're not getting anywhere. And now, in fact, retreat all the way back to Kalina. Uh, the Inter Miami is really cutting down passing lanes very well centrally. And say, you know what? Build through the outsides a little bit more. Midway through this opening half. Nice lunge by Taylor to get a touch. Charlotte gets a fortunate bounce, though. Swiderski steps back to sweep it across. Arfield stepping in. Wide now for Josviak. Cross to the far side, and Alba tall enough. Cleared back to midfield, but reclaimed by Charlotte. Best possession now. Tra breaking into the 18, trying to settle. Swiderski the shot, but it's blocked. Tried to toy it with... Pips off and Miller, but they kept a body in front of him. Throw in Charlotte. Monaco. Miami retreating. Now even Messi is back. The only man leaning forward is Martinez. Poor cross from Affel. Miller heads it to space far side. Lindsay down the line. Gets it back, but a difficult ball to handle. In a race, leaning in Alba. As he shepherds Lindsay to the ground as the ball carries across. No foul, goal kick calendar. Very experienced play there by, by Alba. Just impeding a little bit so he can't get to the ball that trickles out right now. On the verge of a foul, but Alba is so smart, so experienced. Has been there and done that. By the way, in other news, the coach from Cruz Azul, Tuca Ferretti, was fired last week. So. I thought Mexican team said this tournament wasn't important. Well, <laughs> when you lose. And you know what? I kind of have a feeling next year they're going to come in a little hungrier. Only two remain. Caretro in this half of the bracket. And if they win and Miami wins, the semifinal would be right here at Drive Pink. Monterey on the other side. And what a matchup that is against LAFC. Seven, what is it, 11 goals in just two games. Uh, clearly, this side of the bracket is, is easier. LAFC, Tigers, Monterey still there. Club America is out <laughs> in an incredible fashion, obviously, but that's where the heavyweights are. Well, Tigres is out too, so we'll see. Ball Anything could happen. Calendar. Charlotte, token pressure as Miami looks to build. Fifth off. Pressed up to Yedlin. Heads for Martinez. Flying into the challenge, the six foot one privet knocks it down for Bronico. Into the middle, Arfield. Josviak tries to return the ball, deflected away for the throw. That Kramaski challenge almost wins it. Up steps Arroyo, but good work by Charlotte. Time of the night for the chant from the stands. 
el que no alienta a Miami, para qué carajo vino. <laughs> Beautiful ball off to the far flank. Bender trying to get into the 18. He does, but a nice block by Alba, who's seen it before. Poor touch from Taylor behind Martinez. Charlotte gets it right back. Most consistent pressure they've had. In for Callender to grab the cross. And that's where he's become so much better, reading things quicker as a goalkeeper. So his starting position is already very good. And then this becomes a comfortable save because, again, through his experience playing now this year for the first time, he's starting to get a better feel for the game, the speed of it, and then making all the quicker and better decisions. I mean, reason why he's brought into the U.S. men's national team in the last few camps as well. So Drake Callender clearly... In his first year as a true starter, making the count. Alba, Taylor, little give and go. Kramaski shows, but he'll retreat to Miller. Up the line, now back to the Canadian International. Uh, very hard to break Charlotte down, obviously. They keep a high line. They play on a 4-1-4-1. Four, one, four, one. And right now, they're really killing verticality centrally. So it's very hard for Messi to get involved right now. So give Charlotte some credit, saying that they're down one nothing. Into the middle. Taylor gets a touch, but Martinez was on that offside line. And this will be a, a real good test for Inter Miami and Messi as well. We, we all know historically that when Messi doesn't get involved, he's going to start dropping dropping and dropping and want to pick up the ball. Limited touches so far. His team is up one nothing, so he can stay high. Alba pinching in. Swiderski heading it back the other way. But the header went square, and it gives Miami a chance to collapse. Charlotte maintains possession. Monaco inside left. Drives to the 18. Dishes wide for Josviak. Josviak one-on-one with Yedlin. Now back. For Privet sweeps it across a header to the middle, but not much on it. As again, Alba with some good defense on Bender and Calendar there to clean things up. Yeah, and, and, and teams that face into Miami feel the diagonal ball because both Yetlin and, and Alba are not the biggest, although the starting positions are pretty good. But this one floated over Alba's head, and then the cross or the headed cross across the goal mouth for Charlotte FC players. To enter the box could be a possibility for Charlotte to break down this into Miami team. I'll ask you a little touch. And with with Bender and Jawaski, they, they've got some guys out, out wide that are very good in one v one situations and get some good service in. Trying to come up that far flank. Taylor is over. Back for Busquets, directing traffic. 29th minute ticking to a close. Up for Messi. Out wide left. Taylor to Alba. Back for Messi. Tries to cut to the inside, but under pressure, the angle was off. Kramaski does good, though, to step in and steal it off Josviak's boot. And a long switch for Yedlin. Ball blocked back. Miami will retreat and regroup. Out wide left, Taylor dragging Lindsay with him for Alba. Dances around the challenge, drives to the 18, squares to the spot, but Messi had camped out at the top of the 18. The panicked clearance brought down Kramaski. Back heel from Busquets for Messi. Bumps, maintains. Taylor, Messi. Left foot in the box, but angle was off. Back for Alba. Now Taylor. Messi one touch. Taylor outside the six. Drives to the goal line. Messi shot. Blocked away by Kalina. Still loose in the box as Martinez couldn't get it. Now Miller in a battle, and he jumps in front of Swiderski to knock it back for Kripsov. And the fans showing their appreciation. This remembers me, remembers me of the first year at MLS, 1996, when Steve Ralston, just got such a great understanding with El Pibe Valderrama. Robert Taylor and Messi are really on the same page right now. Brilliant for the Finnish international. Ball back for Kramaski. Alba also didn't take much time to settle. 
I mean, you know, professionals play rondos before. They, this was a rondo played inside the 18-yard box, just for our listeners to know, of the opposing team. And Messi, obviously, being the key guy. Ball back for Arroyo again. As Yedlin pushes forward, he steps up to cover on that right flank. And look at the high pressure, Christoph and Miller, right on the midfield. Center circle, Busquets spots an open Yedlin, settles outside the 18, waiting for a run. In for Taylor, the shot with the right foot, sneaks under Kalina, a thing of beauty, and a dagger at the end. Goal! Pizza Miami! Another great example, Phil Shane, of taking what's given to you. And right now, Charlotte is saying, you know what? We're going to leave all by Yetlin over. The ball to Yetlin is on all day long. And now, all of a sudden, while the ball is traveling, Charlotte's defense needs to respond and move. And boom, there you go, Robert Taylor. Because the focus is on Messi. He finds the pocket, spots that one home. Yetlin with the assist. And Robert Taylor again with another goal. 2 nothing. Brilliant performance so far from Inter Miami. 88 degrees, 72 percent humidity. Wouldn't be surprised if the heat end, heat index is up in triple digits. So a water break at the moment, but that is not going to cool off a red hot Inter Miami. You talked about the anticipation, the chemistry, and Fernando. I want to get your view in a moment, but Thomas. It's making those runs when it doesn't look like there's anything there. Run where the ball should be. And that's what Taylor did, and he ends up with another goal. Absolutely. And, I mean, Robert Taylor is, is a very intelligent player. Robert Taylor never was able to showcase that because Inter Miami was not a very good team. And I'm telling you, it's not easy to shine then, obviously, because you rely on 10 other guys to make you better. His understanding, based on Messi's movement, where to go and find space, has been absolutely brilliant. And you're right, Phil. This time it's Robert Taylor operating out zone 14 where Messi normally operates and says, thanks for coming. Great entry ball by DeAndre Yetlin, which we don't give a lot of credit to that he's a good passer. We say he's a hard runner. But hey, that's a good ball on the ground. And sometimes things don't always work out as planned. Fernando, Yedlin actually stopped that too short, overran it, had to step back and reset. And he still had the patience and composure to wait for the run of Taylor. Yes, and I just mentioned it two minutes ago. You see the high pressure. You see when Miller and Christoph are right there in the midfield. It means that we are having Charlotte all the way back. And this is happening. You just try to connect the ball to the flanks, connect the ball to the middle. But when you have your center backs right on the midfield, it means that you're hungry. You want to go to the opposite goal. And that's what happened. It's a 2-0 at the 30-minute mark. Brilliant. What a change here at Drive Pink. Thomas, when you were playing here when it was old Lockhart, you used to have to go to the nightclub after the games. They brought the nightclub to you. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. No, don't, 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 don't bring the secrets. Oh, I think in those days, we rocked this stadium as well, Phil, and you know that. Great connection we had with the fans, and, and Inter Miami's building that same connection right now. I hope this league's easy with, with Messi. But, hey, don't forget, we had Gert Mueller, the all-time leading goal scorer at that time in World Cup history. Nene Kubias, the Peruvian god. Four World Cups, by the way. Elias Figueroa and the little Thomas Rungan just doing all the dirty work <laughs> for these guys. And I did it with a smile, by the way. And no one tells the stories like Thomas Rungan. Oh, don't, you got don't that mention, one right. Don't Senor. mention Kubias and Figueroa and Mueller and all of that. They cannot make it half of interesting as you. When you make the stories. Messi back to keep it alive near side for Yedlin. 35 minutes in. Back to Messi again, who's starting to find the rhythm. Millers cuts the line. Laid off Martinez just in front of Kermaski. A good step up by Lindsay, but his pass goes awry. So a huge goal to start out from the penalty spot. An even bigger goal to now give them a two-goal cushion as we're 10 minutes from the half, Thomas. Yes, and, and, and what has happened with this Messi, Busquets, Alba, and some others, obviously, is that Inter Miami has become a possession team and turning possession into 
chance creation and goals, nice. which Inter Miami never did in the previous years that they played. And that's a huge compliment to Tata Martino instilling that right now. They don't need a lot of chances to be successful because they got some clinical finishes in Messi, Joseph Martinez, and Robert Taylor. Well, three shots, all three on goal, and there two goals go. on the board. Thank you. Yes. By the way, good tackle by our field, but another heroic charge back by Kamal Miller to deny the scoring chance, as he did, as you pointed out, Fernando, against Jesus Ferreira just a round ago. Yes, sir, and that was a very good recovery from Arroyo as well. A wide, far flank, trying to cut inside Ben Bender. Former Turk, dispossessed, up the line Alba, looking to turn Kramaski, finds Martinez in the middle. Back for Arroyo, blind pass across, dropping back to intercept Josviak for Charlotte, and Messi back to play some defense. And back by Charlotte, though, out wide, curled into the middle, and Callender's short hands bring it down. Did you see that? Did you see Messi doing that? Now Arroyo to Busquets. We, we fought Messi's Actually, I saw Messi play as a 17-year-old when I coached the under-20 team in the 205 World Cup. We played Argentina in the first game. He did not start, had not played yet for the first team of Barcelona. And he came in the second half. We still ended up beating them, by the way, one nothing. But they ended up going to the final. And Messi became the starter and then went back. And Frank Reichardt, actually the Dutch game coach, gave him his first opportunity as well. And here we are, totally committed at his age, like he did with Argentina, taking a team on his back and leading them to the promised land. That includes defending and sacrificing as well. Bender Brilliant. Back to try and win it, but whistled for a foul, and it looks like it might be a card, at least a talking to, after Alba was knocked down. And you know what, minutes. Thomas? I was there in the stadium also. In, in, in the Netherlands? Yes, sir. Yeah, that's where, I was there. Where the World Cup. Uh, At the stands. Yes. Yeah. Kun Agüero. Si, senor. Zabaleta. Ah, perfecto. Eh? What, a, what a great team. Muy bien, si, senor. Si, senor. 2005. Yep. Same year of the Confederations Cup in Germany. Mm -hmm. I was in between Germany and the Netherlands, going back and forth. Me gusta. Si, senor. By the way, I'm, I'm using Luis Etchegar right here because I'm used to that. I want to feel players. I'm a defender, you know, <laughs> and I'm pushing him around a little bit. Now you know why I said to wear shin pads. Ball deflected out wide, and the throw went up coming from Miami, but deep in their own end, Bender and Charlotte will put on some pressure. If we win tonight, Luis Miguel Echegaray will invite all of us to Locura Marina, the <laughs> most famous Peruvian restaurant in Miami Beach. He will take care of us. Yep. That's what I've heard. He's got a connection. Yeah. And, and the key right now is, can you go to 3 nothing? Great. If not, do not concede before the half. Ball poked away, giving Chase Kermaski over his apple. Good idea by Messi as he cuts out the mm -hmm. back pass. Forces the touch near side, but a nice little move by Privet to take it across midfield. Now, remember, Houston had a late lead against this Charlotte side. But a good goal by Ajimang, who starts on the bench. And then one of the craziest situations, almost from the opening kickoff. In fact, it was from the kickoff following the goal. A back pass to the goalkeeper that he didn't see, and it went in for an own goal. So that was the game winner. Ball across to Callender. He can't get there. Yedlin does. Snaps it away from Josviak, but a corner for Charlotte. I've been there and done that as a fullback. It's very hard on the weak side to understand your starting position. Goal side, inside of your attacker, not too far away, so you can get a piece of the ball. Good defending there. They're Andre Yetlin on that weak side. By the way, shy of the flag, so a throw in for Harrison Affle, the Ghanaian. Throws it in, and poor touch back by Josviak, and now it'll be Yedlin's turn. This is a Charlotte side, Fernando, that's had to scramble. They needed penalties against Dallas. Penalties against Cruz Azul and that own goal against Houston all sandwiched around an explosion against Necaxa. Well, so they do have it in them. Yes, sir, but I, uh, I'm sure that today, or well, I hope that today, we didn't need to go to the penalties. I hope that uh, Inter Miami will keep doing the same pressure in the second half. And like Thomas said, you know, if it's the third goal, it's fabulous. If not, just who will come and collect it? We are doing a great game. By the way, the back four are playing completely different what happened last Sunday in Dallas. This is a much more comfortable today, Christoph Miller 
and obviously on the sides, Yedlin and Jordi Alba. Yep. Yedlin curling Good around point. the pressure, drops it back for Kripsov, across for Miller. Arroyo is now pistoned back to the deep-lying midfielder as Busquets catching his breath. Nice touch by Alba. Kramaski off to Arroyo. We're going to need a pass count pretty soon, just like they did at Barcelona. Messi cuts it back to his left, tries to drop it in, top of the box, but offside against Alba. If he would have let it run, Taylor would have had it, but it was right to Alba, and Charlotte gets a break. By the way, two nutmegs by Jordi Alba already in this game as well. That is, that's how he solves problems as a left back. I, I like that. Bender. Well, you know what? Another goal or two, and Charlotte's going to be on one. 42nd minute. Bender spinning. Kramaski challenging. Yeah, you talk about Malanda. the worst defense in MLS. They've given, conceded 40. And yes, they can score. But <laughs> pretty much it doesn't take a, a mathematician to figure out that if they do score, Inter Miami will get some chances as well. Not saying this game is over, Phil Shea, but clearly favors Inter Miami. Busquets was held as he tries to touch it back to the youngster. Good work by Martinez defensively. It is 2 nothing Miami as we approach the half. By the way, coming back to Kremaski, wonderful, wonderful article by Michelle Kaufman from Miami Herald, bringing us all the inside of the uh, Kremaski family, a native kid from Key Biscayne, Argentinian family, and uh, it really pays off. Such a story. Love the pictures when he was just a toe-headed youngster. And then, what was it? I think he was four years age. He wrote on his what he wanted to do for a career. He wanted to be a soccer player. Sometimes dreams do come true. Oh, yeah. His father was a, a big rugby player. His, his mother also a hockey player. So it's a sports family. Long up the middle, trying to get a touch. Messi headed away by Privet. Messi giving away around five inches on that challenge. Out wide for Bender. Swiderski hasn't seen the ball lately. Charlotte on the overlap. Gets the cross in, looking for Yostriak. But a good grab by Callender as he plucks it out of midair. Yeah, you feel right now that Charlotte really out wide. That's really where they create nothing centrally yet. So if Alba and Yetlin do their jobs, perfect. If not, there will be fly the balls in there. And so far, Drake Callender has done an excellent job again. And not giving up rebounds and being very quick, reading it and coming off his line. Busquets up to Martinez, getting a lot more mobile here. A couple of other games going on. Nashville has taken a lead before the half against Minnesota and just underway. An early goal for Philadelphia against Queretaro. If oh. those scores hold, it would mean Miami travels to Chester for the semifinals. Driving forward, Taylor poked away at the last minute. And gobbling it up was Westwood. Now to Arfield. Back to the captain. Arfield pushing across midfield. The Canadian international against his national teammate Miller. Near side Josviak. Haffel on his flank. 45th minute. For the stoppage, because of the water break, you'd figure at least two minutes. And there was the Kermaski injury as well. And probably no more than three to be added. Long cross in. Yedlin gets his head in the way. Only as far as Westwood, 25 yards out. Back to the ex-Darby man, but his cross too weak. Miller sends it back. Westwood pulls it out of midair. Privet. Apple poked away by Messi. More defense for the Argentine, and Kripsov chips it. Won't carry into touch right back for Josviak. Drives it into the center, trying to flick it on, but off target. And an easy grab for Callender. And Charlotte is a pedestrian, predictable team. They've got nobody in that final attacking third that goes, boop, here I go. Let me get by somebody. Passes are slow, not great ball circulation. So it becomes fairly easy to defend. I wonder at halftime if they want to take an adjustment and just gamble and get some of their better technical players in the field because right now they're not passing into Miami. That, by the way, gave up four goals against Dallas any problems so far well they are trying to press but miami getting much better at the one touch fifth off off to busquets hmm wonder if that has something to do with it 
into added time. Five minutes added. Something else to point out. I know we had the chance to talk with Chris Henderson earlier today. Kept alive by Kramaski out wide for Alba. And for all the hard work that he and David Beckham have done, credit to the Moss brothers for signing the checks to make some of this happen. David Tepper, the owner of this Charlotte FC squad, well, he can pretty much call any bluff in the world of sports. And I think Miami's laid its cards on the table. It's up to the rest of MLS. Yep. Yostriak behind Kripsoff, trying to get it up the middle, but it trickles away. No chance for Privet, the big center back on a 70-yard foray, and Callender picks it up with ease. Great cover by Miller again. In for Busquets. Can they add a third before the break? Got about three minutes remaining of added time. Out wide for Bender. Kramaski with him, stride for stride. Bender. Arfield. Captain Westwood. Across for Bronico. Here's Josviak. Drives it in. Gifts off in perfect position, but his header brought down by Apple pinching in. The flank starting to open up as Charlotte collapsing inside to cut out the exit lanes. You kind of sense that if Miami wanted to, there might be a break. Ball in, blocked by Arroyo. Yedlin back over his head. Into the 48th minute we go. Apple, the long diagonal, but hangs in midair. Alba steps over. Strong header by Bender. Out wide near side, Josviak sends it all the way across back for Bender. Top of the box for Westwood. Charlotte maintaining possession. The cross inside, but there's no one on the receiving end. Back for Josviak. Top of the 18, but offside on one of those crosses. And for all of the pretty passes, Miami with a restart. Quickly taken. Busquets for Messi. One against the world. My money's on Messi. Busquets. Near side, Arroyo, approaching the 49th minute. Messi with a stutter step, and the Charlotte defenders bang into each other. Splits the defense wide for Taylor. Kramaski makes the run. Taylor tries to thread it through. Good work by Lindsay to make the block. So now, six players staying back. Charlotte, a half-hearted push forward. Wide for Lindsay. Lifted by Westwood into the path of Swiderski. One on two defenders. Drags Kiffs off wide. And the big Ukrainian knocks it into the stands. It'll be a corner kick for Charlotte. Yeah, Sergi, a great job, quite frankly, because Drake Callender, first mistake, comes up his line, knows yeah. he's in no man's land. And Serge is just able to put his body there so the Charlotte player cannot <laughs> pretty much put it in the empty net. So good defending there. And Drake, as aggressive as you are, right now you have to be smart. And again, into Miami going half zonal, half man-to-man -man as well. Messi staying high. Everybody else back inside the 18-yard box. The big pole, Swiderski, joined by the two center backs, Privet and Malanda. And by the way, Messi in a 1v1 situation. If Drake can get this, the counter is on. Ball long over to this near side, and it trickles across. Malanda, the player that was closest, but they're going to say it came off. Arroyo will swing to the near side and take it again, and more time off the clock. Only about 40 seconds of added time remain. Huge gamble, by the way, by, by Charlotte. Normally, if somebody stays high, it's two versus one. They're going to 1v1 against Leo Messi with acres of space. If you can go in the counter and have two guys that can bridge a gap without the ball, Taylor can do that. It could be a very good situation for Inter Miami. But first things first, do not concede. Grant Bronico, the man keeping an eye on Messi. From the corner, Charlotte inside, cleared away, but going the other direction, out across the far side goal line. Now they have to make that 70-yard jog and try it from the far side if there's enough time. Very strange. Charlotte is in no rush. I, I, I don't get it. They were taking so much time out of the clock in the previous corner. Now the same player goes all the way to the other side. Well, left, right, left, right. An army jog by Westwood. The referee at this point letting him take it. We're already into the 51st minute. If they can get a goal here, it could be huge. Five in the box. Westwood into the middle. Calendar stays back. Headed across top of the 18. Intercepted by Taylor. 
and the whistle blows from Ismail El Fat. The half to a close. Fernando down on the field. Looks like a player down, but yep. Inter Miami finding a way to control this match. Yeah, I'm trying to see who's on the ground right now. Shadow in the very last second. He was hit and trying to get up. Okay. Looks like Swiderski, but yeah, regardless, yeah. good control of this match by Miami. He's getting up right now, so okay. Thomas, when we take a look at this first half, Tata Martino happy or still has work to do? No, happy, absolutely. And again, Taylor, now four goals, four assists since Messi entered as well. That second goal, huge, obviously. A clean sheet, even more important at home. And now they can see what Charlotte's going to do at, at the half tactically because the onus is on them to make those changes. And then Tata can say, okay, we'll counter with the following ideal situation. Very professional, workmanlike, with some exceptional goals and some brilliant play at times by Messi. Just a good workmanlike performance by Inter Miami. Two nothing Inter Miami over Charlotte. They can see the semifinals from here. Back to Drive Pink with the halftime show after this. It's halftime. Time to get caught up on the first half. It's the Inter Miami CF halftime show. Wendy's is open till midnight or later, so you can give in to the craving and go night mode. Now all of your favorite menu items just got their bedtime extended. You can get what you want even later, like the Baconator with six strips of bacon or the Perfect Fries and Frosty Duo. If you're up later, then so are we. So go ahead and pull through the drive through When the craving hits, go night mode at Wendy's. Open till midnight or later. All right, see ya <clears throat> later. At participating U.S. Wendy's, hours may vary. If this were a Reese's TV ad, you'd be staring at a Reese's peanut butter cup. And sure, my voice is peanut buttery smooth, but still, you need to see the peanut butter cups, right? No? I can really just say Reese's and you'll go get some? <laughs> okay. Reese's. 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 Really working, actually. Reese's. Reese's. This, I'm on to something. Reese's. 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 Finding great candidates to hire can be like, well trying to find a needle in a haystack. Sure, you can post your job to some job board, but then all you can do is hope the right person comes along, which is why you should try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash free. ZipRecruiter doesn't depend on candidates finding you. Its powerful technology identifies people with the right experience and actively invites them to apply to your job. You get qualified candidates fast. So while other companies might deliver a lot of hay, ZipRecruiter finds you what you're looking for. The needle in the haystack. Four out of five employers who post a job in ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate through the site within the first day. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. And right now you can try ZipRecruiter for free. That's right, free. Just go to this exclusive web address, ZipRecruiter.com slash free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. ZipRecruiter.com slash free. Let's get back to the Inter Miami CF halftime show on AM 790, FM 104.3, HD2, the ticket, and streaming on the Odyssey app. Welcome back to Drive Pink Stadium. No sign of any Charlotte substitutes. Inter Miami's dressed in their gray pennies and pink shorts, working out again. A lot more intent in these warm-ups at the half. Even the goalkeepers out there getting their touches in. But there might actually be more security men on the pitch than there are substitutes. 2-0 the score for Inter-Miami here on the halftime show. Mentioned early goals have been the story since Lionel Messi's arrival, at least since his late goal heroics in his opener against Cruz Azul. Today, taking on Charlotte, and this time, Messi as a playmaker and provider. 
but a little bit of controversy inside the box first for a touch then for a challenge and one way or the other the foul would mean miami would get the chance to take the lead let's take a listen Dives in kramaski about 30 yards out takes the touch fakes the shot martinez messy and he almost dribbles through kramaski flying in with a touch appeals for a handball whoa, 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 whoa. one back by miami we'll have to wait for a stoppage in comes arroyo he gets knocked down and it will be a penalty yes sir. one way or the other miami's going to the spot so for another early lead in this league's cup as the clock ticks to 11 martinez right heel touching the 18 inside the box straight on with kalina the whistle the lean back to his right drives it into the corner with kalina diving the other way goal for inner miami center circle busquets spots an open yedlin settles outside the 18 waiting for a run in for taylor the shot with the right foot, sneaks under Kalina, a thing of beauty, and a dagger at the end. Goal! Peter Miami! Uh, you can tell it caught Fernando Fiore's passion, and right now a 2 nothing score line, three for three in shots, all of them coming from inside of the box, and two of those three going into the net 65 percent possessions we look at the stats 410 passes to 214 nearly double and most important the accuracy up there as well over 91 percent and over 84 percent inside the charlotte half three quarters for charlotte just one for miami and taking a look at some of the other situations nine to one charlotte fouls they have been forced to try and slow this game down well right now it is two nothing for miami over charlotte and we've got more on the halftime show after this Best to Celsius, 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 still Celsius, 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 goal, 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 incredible, Celsius Essential Energy Drinks, the official energy drink of Inter Miami CF. Wireless headphones, that'll be $200. I'll use my Capital One Quicksilver card. Now that's a hit. <laughs> you used the Capital One Quicksilver card, which makes you the hero of every purchase. With Quicksilver, you earn unlimited 1.5% cash back on every purchase everywhere. I wanted running music, but unlimited 1.5% cash back is pretty heroic. Good instincts. Every hero needs a theme song. The Capital One Quicksilver card. What's in your wallet? Terms apply. See CapitalOne.com for details. Dural Pro Health y West Coast University se unen para ofrecerle una feria de la salud el 13 de agosto entre 10 de la mañana y 2 de la tarde en el 9250 Northwest 36th Street en Dural. Los asistentes podrán hacerse exámenes médicos en diferentes especialidades. Este evento es gratis y abierto al público. Right now at Wendy's, when you buy either Dave's Single, Spicy Chicken Sandwich, Medium Frosty, or 10-Piece Nuggets, you can get another for just a buck. Your dollar never tasted so good. So it's obvious what everyone will get, right? Ooh, definitely nuggets Spicy and chicken a frosty. Sandwich. Dave Dave single single. And a frosty, frosty for me. and a frosty. Okay, who said frosty and a frosty? Pick your obvious choice. Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's. Buy one, get one for a buck. Limited time only. Price of participation may vary. U.S. Wendy's valid for item of equal or lesser value. Cannot be combined in a combo or any other offer. If this were a Reese's TV ad, you'd be staring at a Reese's peanut butter cup. And sure, my voice is peanut buttery smooth, but still, you need to see the peanut butter cups, right? No? I can really just say Reese's and you'll go get some? Okay. Reese's. 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 Really working, actually. Reese's. Reese's. This, I'm on to something. Reese's. 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 Let's get back to the Inter-Miami CF Halftime Show on AM790, FM1043, HD2, The Ticket, and streaming on the Odyssey app. At the half, 2 nothing Miami. Fernando Fiore down on the field. Phil Shane Thomas Rongan in the catbird seat. And right now, looking at this dry pink stadium, have to admit I feel a little calmer now. We were talking about this before the match, and I, you're looking at all these names that are over LAFC and Monterey on the other side, especially Philadelphia, what it looks like it might be on this side with their lead at the half against Caretro. Nashville, even a 2 nothing lead over Minnesota. This looked to be the easy one. I was just wondering, especially after Dallas, if Miami might overlook Charlotte. The obvious answer at the half is no. 
no, quite comfortable game for Miami. And, and also, you know, yeah, Messi's Messi, but he also understands what the game gives him. There's no need for him right now because of Robert Taylor on the assist of Yetland scoring a goal and then going up early as well. I think the most important thing that I, I saw here after Dallasville is the connection between midfield and the back four defensively. We've not given up any chances, which we did against Dallas, and they scored four, obviously. And I'm telling you, Philadelphia Nashville is a step up from what they've played so far. So this is a really good exercise. Let's keep a clean sheet. Let's go to three and four. And if Messi needs, <laughs> you need Messi's magic, it obviously will be there, but a quiet game for uh, for Leo so far uh, to be expected. He looked actually human. Well, I want you to put your coaching hat on here for a second, and I hate to do this to you, but let's put you in the Charlotte dressing room right now. What did you see in the first half that you might try to exploit in the second to get back in this game? Well, there's not much there, quite frankly, and, and, and where they have struggled, obviously they've conceded to, but it is what it is. I think in his front four or five, he's going to make some changes. I see two players right now on the field that to me look like they're actively preparing to get it at the halftime. So there's potentially two changes and a half fill. We just need to see who they are and if he makes an adjustment to his formation as well. And if he sees potentially uh, some opportunities or duels that could go in Charlotte FC's favor. I don't see it happening. But right now, Christian Latanzio needs to make some changes, no doubt about it, both in personnel and maybe in tactics. Only time will tell. Well, one player who has been red hot is the Ghanaian Patrick Ajiman. He's and one of them, Phil. Yeah. I would imagine we will see him maybe from the start of yeah. this second half. Fernando Fiore down on the pitch as we get set for the start of the second half. Fernando, this seemed to be, and you talked about it defensively, a lot more composed Miami. Well, it's a completely different attitude uh, tonight. Uh, I was there in Dallas, and I saw <laughs> what was going on. Every single play from Dallas, it was a nightmare for the back line of Inter Miami, especially with Ferreira going on with uh, Velasco. Everything was everything was going right for Dallas. Fortunately for us, it was a, the miracle by Messi at the end and, and Kremaski coming in and, and scoring the goal. But definitely today, you can see that they are much more intense Christoph, Miller, even with the help with Arroyo, Yedlin, Jordi Alba, they are, they are absolutely a different attitude than what happened on, on, uh, on Dallas last Sunday. Another thing that is uh, taken in consideration, and you were mentioning, or I think it was Thomas during the, during the first half, I didn't see one single dribble by a player from Charlotte. Everything was trying to make a cross, you know, and, and basically Drake Callender was absolutely fantastic cutting all those crosses. But... You have to make at least an intention to dribble, to get a pass, to get inside the 18. Nothing of that was done by the Charlotte, by the Charlotte team today. And the other thing that it really brings my attention is, again, Jefferson. I mean, uh, Joseph Martinez taking a penalty. What's going on there? So Messi is trying to help and help more and more. Joseph trying to get back his confidence and be the striker that he wants for. Well, six goals in the regular season and now adds his second of the League Cup. We'll be back with the second half. That does it for the halftime show. Stay with us on AM790. Pass to Celsius. Celsius, 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 Celsius. Still Celsius. Celsius, Celsius. Goal! Goal, 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 Incredible! Celsius Essential Energy Drinks, the official energy drink of Inter Miami CF. Rod Landon's University Dodge. Ask us here as the Ever and we receive us the 25% of the Squento MFRP. Or 1.9% APR. In la nueva selección Ray 1500. University Dodge quiere poner un nuevo Dodge en tu garaje. Entre Griffin and Sterling in la University Drive in Davie. UniversityDodge.com. Wireless headphones. That'll be $200. I'll use my Capital One Quicksilver card. Now that's a hit. <laughs> you used the Capital One Quicksilver card, which makes you the hero of every purchase. With Quicksilver, you earn unlimited 1.5% cash back on every purchase everywhere. I wanted running music, but unlimited 1.5% cash back is pretty heroic. Good instincts. Every hero needs a theme song. The Capital One Quicksilver card. What's in your wallet? Terms apply. See CapitalOne.com for details. If this were a Reese's TV ad, you'd be staring at a Reese's peanut butter cup. 
And sure, my voice is peanut buttery smooth, but still, you need to see the peanut butter cups, right? No? I can really just say Reese's and you'll go get some? <laughs> okay. Reese's. 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 Really working, actually. Reese's. Reese's. This, I'm on to something. Reese's. 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 Wendy's is open till midnight or later, so you can give in to the craving and go night mode. Now all of your favorite menu items just got their bedtime extended. You can get what you want even later, like the Baconator with six strips of bacon or the Perfect Fries and Frosty Duo. If you're up later, then so are we. So go ahead and pull through the drive-thru. When the craving hits, go night mode at Wendy's. Open till midnight or later. All right, see ya <clears throat> later. At participating U.S. Wendy's, hours may vary. Let's get back to the Inter-Miami CF Halftime Show on AM790, FM1043, HD2, The Ticket, and streaming on the Odyssey app. All started early here in the second half as Inter-Miami looking to defend its 2-0 lead over Charlotte. Phil Shane, Thomas Rongen, Fernando Fiori down pitch side. Miami looking at a ticket to the semifinals, but Charlotte can still snatch it out of their hands. No changes for Miami as they're pinned back in their own end. Launch to the midfield for Messi. A little casual touch to the middle, but a good step up by Lindsay. A little long on his enthusiasm, and Kifsoff nods it back to Callender. Two players coming in. We talked about Patrick Ajiman, the 22-year-old from Hartford. Very promising player coming over from Western Mass out of the Rhode Island Rams, and he has been on fire in this tournament. Meanwhile, the veteran Belgian, the 32-year-old Brent de Jager, who had been playing at Toulouse, coming out of Kortrijk and Ghent. So a playmaker and a finisher, and let's see if that will shake things up. I love Ghent. Up for Arroyo. One well by Affel. Into the middle, de Jager. On the turn, Swiderski poked away. So the Jaeger out wide left, Ajiman alongside Swiderski, and Bender out on this left side. Almost a four-man front from Charlotte. Yep. You said they needed to make something happen. They will. Absolutely. When the ball turns over, it becomes almost two central strikers, which now Kamal Miller and Sergi needs to make some adjustments because they're going to play for long periods, one versus one, which means Alba and Yetlin need to give some cover at times as well. It also opens up space for Inter Miami when the ball turns over. Out wide for the Jaeger. Likes him as a playmaker back in his Toulouse days and a good pickup. When you think about it, everyone looking at Messi right now and you hear the rumors of Neymar and even Mbappe. Ball deflected, Messi giving chase. Melanda sails over to get in front. Messi trying to poke it away and he does get a touch but it carries with a goal kick, you could say that the best signing this year in MLS has been Dennis Buwanga. <laughs> and that's a guy from San Etienne who got relegated. That was smart scouting by LAFC. Yeah, no doubt, and Jaeger has that ability. There's a lot of good talent out there for the taking. Lindsay near side. Well, they started to chant, Messi, Messi. Ball crossed. Swiderski dropping back, Ajiman leading the line, and a good tackle by Kripsov to get in the way, and tap dancing through the challenges, Yedlin to maintain possession. We started with the warm-ups right here next to me, Campana, Gomez, Taylor, I mean, uh, Ruiz, Robinson. Again, the bench looks a lot deeper than it did just a month ago. Yeah. And as Chris mentioned, Chris Henderson, the soccer or the sporting director here at Inter Miami, ball in off the throw in for Ajiman, reaching in Arroyo to steal it away. We still have Gregory and John Mota about to pop back in, and the two Argentines about to join as well. Apple getting there first, takes the shot at the top of the arc. But it sails wide harmlessly of Calendar's net. Yeah, you can see Tata Martina right now pointing a little bit because their shape, Charlotte FC, with the two introductions of the reserves, has changed a little bit and it's given into Miami a little bit of problem in their buildup. And also defensively, as I said again, if you come out Miller, it's always a 2v1 against one front runner. Now all of a sudden, 
you look at a traditional, you know, front two of two big guys as well. So how do you play through pressure? How do you stay patient and not concede and seek that third goal? Game over. Yeah, Jordi Alba cuts to the middle and finds his longtime mate who scats back for Alba, the left back now playing as an inside right. Messi over with him, wide for Yedlin, and Alba goes over on that flank as well. Jordi Alba as a right winger, and now Messi will retreat. By the way, Philadelphia's goal early from Jesus Bueno. Messi looking for one here, drags, drives into the 18, pinballs around. Taylor blocks it right back. The cross attempt deflected back for Kramaski. Nashville has added a third in their lead over Minnesota. Get to that in a moment, but it looks as though Minnesota United, the loon's about to fly away. Jaquel Moore, Teal Bunbury, and Alex Muil. By the way, we, we got to give Charlotte some credit there because that was vintage Messi coming inside through mm-hmm. zone 14 and then going far post where he scored hundreds of goals. Good defending there. Not allowing that shot to take place, but Messi actively off the dribble right now looking for some openings. 51st minute underway. Inter Miami on the far flank. Yedlin and Martinez. Thomas, start of the season, we were talking about possession almost as an albatross. Sure, it was nice, but they weren't able to get challenges offensively. Ball forward for Taylor. Now they're getting close to 70% possession, and they're putting balls in the back of the net. Huge, Phil. You you know that if you can turn your possession into chance creation, eventually goals, that's big. Saying that, three shots on target, two goals so far, which is also very, very clinical. Uh, You won't get 12, 14 each and every game. If you get five, you can score two or three. Hey, job done, well done, and then your your possession is meaningful. Clips off. All the way near side for Miller. Busquets jogging to the near side. Ball still in the Miami half. Alba right in front of Christian Latancio, the Charlotte boss. These two teams were scheduled to resume the MLS season on August 20th, but since we knew one of them would be advancing, not just to the semis, but to a third place game. That match has been postponed indefinitely because who knows what's going to happen with Miami against Cincinnati and a potential date in the Open Cup final. Miller back to calendar. And and Charlotte's doing a lot more running, Phil. And I'm telling you, I would like to venture. The whole world is hot. Let's be real honest. (laughs) It's still a little hotter here than Charlotte. And they play predominantly at home. So you'd like to think the last 20 minutes into Miami will be able physically Alba to become even stronger. Back. And Charlotte, just like Dallas, will drop a little bit as well. And at 2 nothing, the veteran players are going, we'll rest with the ball. We'll take a break while we have the ball as well. Patience and then the killer as well. That is still something where Inter Miami needs to get better because Messi is the only one who can feel that and do it. Goal kick for Calendar, and that's what the early goal importance is. Charlotte has had to chase the ball since the 10th minute. Yeah. Arroyo almost popped up. Busquets back to the Ecuadorian, and again, pinpoint one-touch pass from Busquets. Out from Miller to midfield for Messi, tripped up. And that was to Jaeger. A little tap on the head as he draws the foul and a free kick for Inter-Miami. So important, too, for Colin Miller and, and Sergi to continue to make their passes count and a very comforter Kamal Miller finding Messi foul we can get our lines up and we maintain possession as well good football it's very hot down here can you please send me a Celsius <laughs> well I know coach's corner has one coming up okay back for calendar so comfortable under pressure long left foot trying to free Taylor does a good job holding off Lindsay touches it around Melanda Taylor to the inside Almost Messi-like, the return pass from Messi intercepted by the Frenchman, and Melanda starts the break the other way. It's contagious, Thomas. Yeah, it, it certainly is contagious. Driving through. Ronico, Bender sends it long. Yedlin back, and with Ajiman on the doorstep, he still finds Calendar and then sprints out to start a break the other way. Messi had checked back. But Yedlin, too optimistic, even 
a 16-year-old Messi would have had a hard <laughs> chance catching up with that one. As good as his pass was to Taylor, measured the right pace, as poor as this one is, because Messi is gone if you just lead him a little bit. Come on, Yedlin. And Yedlin knew it, putting his head in his hands. Into the middle for Swiderski. Low roller, and down goes Callender. Campana is here. McVeigh is, is here also. Although, Thomas, would you be looking – well, Tata Martino's a little different. Would you be looking more perhaps for midfield or defense at the moment? I wouldn't look for anything. Maybe it's 60, 65. I stopped making some changes as well. No needs. This team is functioning well. Nobody's fatigued right now. No, absolutely not. And it doesn't seem like right now anybody is really actively sprinting to come in as well. At 60, 65, 70, Tata will make some changes based on result and based on performances. And now, because of all these new players, we have quality depth in all three lines. So we can go to a Diego Gomez, you know, that's a Paraguayan international, for instance. He can go to Leo Campana if he needs to go. Or he can, you know, get a defender in there and say, game over. Thanks for coming. Well, they're here warming up. Everyone that you mentioned, my dear Thomas Romney. Yeah, that's normal. Uh, you know, both teams obviously are out wide doing a little warm up. An injury could occur, and all of a sudden you got to jump in. So that's normal. Doesn't mean they're going to make substitutions, though. No, yeah. not yet, not yet. And I don't see Tata Martino looking uh, this way neither. So probably they are just trying to get ready. Uh, another another player that you forget to mention, my dear Phil Sean, is uh, Stefanelli. He's almost ready to come back. Uh, we saw him uh, this uh, past week training pretty hard. Well, again. What had been the weakest bench in MLS now could be the strongest. Okay, here we go. Foul against Arroyo. A free kick quickly taken by Charlotte, but the referee, Ismail Elfath, wanted to have a chat with the Ecuadorian. Charlotte probably not happy because they had a chance for a break, but Miami okay. now with a chance to recover. Okay, guys, my good friend Leo Campana is going in. We are in the 57th minute. Martinez, I'm not sure he's touched the ball here in the second half. And that's you, the reason. You'd imagine a straight swap. Yeah. And Campana did look good. Ball blasted Woo! wide of Callender's net from distance. Our field with a cannon. And, and, and Phil, now it's also managing games in a short amount of time with the travel to Dallas as well. They've played Wednesday, Saturday, Friday, Sundays. And this will continue, you know, for the next few weeks as well. So now is Tata Martino going to say, I've got to also be smart in my rotation, resting players, uh, because the semifinals is probably right there for the begging and smart as well prevent injuries if your starters and get capable players like leo campana coming off the bench heading to the 58 spelling martinez as you said who's been very quiet Arroyo. outside of the penalty looking for messi poked away by charlotte ajima on the shot calendar saw it all the way a rebound but he keeps it close and no one nearby so yep. even on a day where they're dominant on the scoreboard, Calendar being called to the rescue here in the second half. Uh, Inter Miami's getting stretched right now, and, and, and Taylor's staying high, and all of a sudden, Benja Kramensky as well, and they got to get back to basics from a defensive standpoint. Messi danced past one, looks to the referee, thought he was held. Charlotte gets the ball back. Much better from Charlotte here in the second. Hajima is a tank on the front line. Looks in midfield somewhere as well, where they've lost a little bit the battle. For Arroyo, finding Busquets, who's also been cut out. So he decides to do a little pirouette. Need to get him as the metronome. Now Miller towards midfield. They back off. Wide for Alba. Campana is at the stripe. Kramaski finding Taylor. Pinned on this near side touch. Alba a little soft, but Taylor flies into the challenge. Ajiman, though, a brick wall to run into. Charlotte the other way. Ben Bender down the line right in front of his boss, Christian Latanzio. Into the middle, but another sloppy pass from the former Terp. Right back to Pipsaw. Out wide. Kramaski gets it in the left wing. Martinez in the middle. Messi behind him. With a 2 0 lead, a blind pass to the middle by Kramaski to find Arroyo. Off to Busquets. Heading to the 60th minute. Cometh the hour, and here is Messi. Kramaski. Taylor, Messi, oh, splits what a beauty. the line for Alba to the spot, but back to block it away was Malanda. Diving 
challenge near side for Bender, and he collides with Taylor. The whistle blows, Jordan, and Taylor, Jordy, Jordy Alba still down. Yep. Grabbing his left cheek. I didn't get that one. I, I, I'm i very close to the to the action, and I didn't see a, a foul by Jordi Alba. If anything, it was the other way around. Uh, Alba is slowly going on, held by the referee, but the referee, in my humble opinion, made a big mistake. Well, and Messi is explaining exactly that. Messi has not been yeah. shy arguing with the officials. Another water break as they will prepare to make the substitution. Again, the temperature... The heat index approaching 100. Charlotte will start to wilt. They're coming to the near side. Actually, not the water break. They're just taking advantage of the substitution and the injury. Campana in for Martinez. A good performance off the bench last game. Uh, absolutely. I mean, Leo is fighting for his life right now because Tata Martina clearly says, Joseph Martinez is my nine. I'm not going to play with two. Uh, so Leo Campana on big money right now still young and a guy that's sellable could be the odd man out at the end of the day so yes important for leo highly motivated and any given day is a threat in particular aerial because of his size ajaman all six foot four of them turns the corner into the 18 drops to the spot well covered by arroyo picked off inside the box by the jaeger and the belgian keeps it alive Back to Bender, but he bends it too much and too high. No chance for Swiderski, but good play by Charlotte. No doubt about it, and that's where the substitution was made. What a explosive move they're getting around Alba. Powerful end line. And then Oroyo does a great job, actually, in funneling back. And, and I have Victor Ulloa right here next to me. Yeah, he'll come also. In. I think. Won't surprise me if Victor Ulloa will be the next one to tighten things up in midfield where we've lost the battle a little bit on both sides of the ball. It'll be a goal kick calendar in the middle of the six. Drifts off to his right, Miller to his left. He'll head to the Canadian. Alba wide on this near side as we're in the 62nd minute. Barcelona man, one touch to Busquets. Dramaski so comfortable on the ball. Gets it, turns to midfield. Campana now leading the line. Much bigger target, laid off for Messi. Hit behind the play, Busquets play on. Wide for Yedlin, back for Messi. Kramaski's in front of him if he wishes. Messi riding the challenge and finally gets the whistle. A free kick some 35 yards out. And now it looks like our card coming out. Miller coming up and not happy at all. Standing up for his captain. The first yellow cut of the game. The captain, Ashley Westwood, goes in the book. I guess the former villain is one again. <laughs> By the way, Nashville have added two more goals. Sam Surridge, who is looking to be a pretty good midseason pickup, and Hany Mukhtar, who again is on an MVP pace. 5-0 Nashville over Minnesota. Still 1-0 at the half. Philadelphia in their game against Caretaro. Yeah, when it's all set and done, and Jim Curtin can get his team purring, I'm telling you, Philadelphia is a darn good team. So is Nashville with, as you said, Hani Mukhtar. A step up from what Inter Miami's played so far. Busquets through for Kramaski. Guides it, chips it through, running on Campana. And Malanda forced to clear, but the flag will come up against the Ecuadorian striker. By the way, a red card against Minnesota just after the half hour. And four, actually all five goals coming after the ejection. So Nashville taking advantage. And remember, if Philadelphia holds on to their lead, Miami would head to Pennsylvania for the semifinal on the 15th. If Caretaro comes back, and remember, all they need is a goal and then penalties... If Caretaro comes back, the semifinal will be here at Drive Pink. Yeah, that game is not over, Phil. You're right. Ajiman challenging Miller, who had a hold and then some, and now a yellow card against the Inter Miami defender. Yeah, Ajiman shows <laughs> why he's a handful right there. Powerful runner with the ball. And Kamal Miller, the Canadian international, knows about being tough. And all of a sudden, 
needs to pull the jersey from behind and takes the yellow for his team. Sloppy performance throughout this start of that second half by Inter Miami on both sides of the ball, Phil. Erwin Vargas coming in for yep. the tiring Ben Bender, the 21-year-old Colombian from Magdalena. Had been playing for Firenze and now suiting up in MLS. Lifted by Westwood. Back comes Kermaski, loose in the six, appeals for a handball. Trickles across the goal line and a goal kick for Callender. Was there enough for VAR to have a say? Charlotte will take a goal any way they can get it. Uh, Tata has seen enough. He's going, you know what? We, we, we've, we've lost this game here. The energy isn't there anymore, and we got to make some changes. It wouldn't surprise me if it's a Victor Oyoa, a workman-like guy well, that looks can like just break things up. He was Gomez Diego going Gomez, in. the Paraguayan heading to midfield, Fernando. The no. straight swap. He came back. <laughs> uh, so much for that would be yep. Kermaski. Let's see if it is Oyoa. Well, yeah. 65th minute. Gomez went all the way to halfway from my distance to Tata Martino, and then Tata says, no, 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 hold on, hold on. Those would be too many obvious choices for the main fact that their character is in your face. And right now, a teammate in this Inter Miami team needs to shake it up a little bit to raise our level, because I'm telling you, it looks more for a 2-1 sloppy goal than a 3 nothing right now. And Miami knows more than anyone that, from the positive side, a two-goal lead is nothing. 66th minute, halfway done. Long ball kicks off, wide for Yedlin. Messi directing traffic back to Arroyo. Busquets in the center of the park, but they'll retreat to the big Ukrainian. Kripsov. Looking long. Alba on his horse. Tries to keep it in play, but it trickles across the chalk. And actually, that's not a bad play, because now you can get your lines up, pin them in there, a throw in. I'm telling you, a throw in for a team in the defensive third, missing a player, by the way, but throwing in the ball so you can double and win balls back far away from goal. Under pressure. Yeah, that's just Rivet. poor defending again. Not the right mindset right now, Phil. The Jaeger far flank. Ajiman in the middle looking for the cross. Miller heads it clear. Gobbled up by Westwood. Back into the middle, but Miller again with the parry. And this one to midfield. Campana with a little lean on Melanda. Commits the foul, but it gives Miami a chance to catch its breath. Yeah, that's a poor foul as well, committed by, by Leo. Noah Allen is also intensifying the warm-up. Again, Allen could allow Alba to move up for a tiring Taylor. So many options that were not there. Just a month ago, into the corner, Swiderski. Good cross over Ajiman, but not over Callender as he grabs it in the center of his area. Charlotte substitutes have changed the dynamics of this game, but they have not been able to change the score. Messi on the far flank. I Reds it, it down for Yedlin, but the angle a little off. And again, Yedlin put the brakes on. If he would have kept running, it might have been to his feet. Now it's Gomez and Ruiz going in. So Ruiz, the third member of that defensive midfield call. Good step in by Taylor to clear the Melanda pass. Tries to feed Campana. But overly optimistic. Out comes Kalina. Westwood to midfield. You talked about how composed and how con how tight the midfield and back line were from Miami. Things are starting to get stretched here in the second half. Yeah, they certainly are. And that's why Tata's going to make a double soup as well and, and put in two workmanlike players, the young David Ruiz and obviously Trying to drive to the inside and right into the big Ukrainian, the Colombian Vargas. Down he goes, but back to his feet in time for a Attempted give and go, but the angles were off, and it's back I mean, to calendar. Let's be real honest. Thank God there's no ideas of Charlotte in that final third yeah. because right now they're with ease getting into the final third, but that final product so poor right now, letting Miami a bit off the hook. Well, it's one uh, player from Paraguay, the other player from Honduras. So, se habla español in el Inter Miami. Through ball for Taylor. Kramaski knocked down. Taylor gets it in the 18. Back to the spot. No! 
Massey on goal, but deflected away at the last moment, denying a third for Miami. Oh. The ability for Taylor to find Messi each and every time is pretty unique in that zone 14. Messi pops up again. Brilliant, but desperate defending by Charlotte. Not getting Messi his first goal of this game. Getting set to make some of the changes. Gomez on the sideline. Taylor is leaving. Messi is taking out the corner kick. Only three pink jerseys inside the 18. Kramaski just outside. Taylor available for a short corner if they wish. Jorge Taylor, the longtime assistant for Tata. Now Tata comes in to pass on instructions to the two subs. Played short. Taylor, Alba. Messi, oh, Whitey went through the legs. Messi, Taylor, Messi into the 18. Good work by Apple to stay with them. And Charlotte looking, but every lane is filled with pink. 70 minutes in. That's a third 2 nil for Jordi Alba. And you could hear the Jamaican fans screaming, Salad. Right, Salad, 2 nil not make. Privet. Ball dropped back. By the way, with those subs, Apple oh, no no on the near side, Vargas playing as a right wing back. Apple pinching in almost as a third center back. They get across midfield, and a composed Miami defense sends them back the other way. 71st minute, long ball, Melanda. The Frenchman a little... Over eager on that pass that carries beyond Diego and a throw in for Miami, but Charlotte will press the throw as Miami makes two changes. First is Taylor coming out for the Paraguayan Gomez, who will definitely bring injury, bring some intensity. The other player exiting is Kramaski, so one youngster for another from Key Biscayne to Little Havana. Papa Martino. I guess shaking the bones and playing some dominoes with Ruiz as the Honduran will step into the midfield. Good first half for Kramaski. And he made the efforts here in the second. But this is a match made for Ruiz. What a break. 72nd minute and a water break. Fernando, you kind of talked about the Honduran connection. But this is a kid that is Miami through and through. Miami is that melting pot. But he's good enough to make the Honduran under-20 World Cup team. Well, let me tell you something. I, I'm very close to the, to the Honduran community here in the United States and also in the country. And, and they're all crazy about David Ruiz. They, they keep calling me and asking me about how David is doing. They are really, you know, getting uh, very emotional knowing that David Ruiz is playing a long Messi. So yes, he's from here, but uh, <laughs> they are they are very much uh, enthused in uh, in Honduras. And Thomas famously comes in, gets the goal, gets an assist, and gets a red card. And in the under twenty World Cup, gets a goal, gets a red card. So you can look at that as a negative. But as a manager, <laughs> heck, you were that type of player in some ways. You'd yep. rather have someone that has the intensity and try and get them to dial it back than to try and light the fire in the first place. Absolutely. And talk about lighting fires. That's what Inter-Miami needs right now. And David Ruiz gives you that. So does Diego Gomez. You take it out a winger and a midfielder, you insert in two wingers, which means, you know, you're going to play out of a 4-4-2, stabilize the midfield where they've lost the battle, and get more energy as well, which then hopefully becomes contagious among the team. Smart. In game management by Tata Martino. I like it. Well, we heard today that Facundo Farias has made the trek inside Miami and could be available for that semi final. The attacking midfielder out of Colon, Thomas Avilas, the promising center back from Racing, is going to come in tomorrow. And again, we have seen John Mota in some of the rehab assignments that he is taking. Gregory as well as the wave makes its way around dry pink. Yes, there are enough fans packed in to do a legitimate wave. And I think even more will try and cram in at the semifinals here on the 15th. 
Unfortunately, the rest of the stadium is not participating, only the people in front of us. And correctly <laughs> so. I hate the wave. I really do not like the wave. Thomas, you were all. just doing the wave. It's so American. It's so like. States, I will do it. I will do it when they States, get to my point. So, por favor. Si, si, si. Fernando, I will do it. Do not do this. La ola, la ola. Now it makes it all the way around. Here we it, go, here we go. It comes close to El Presidente. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Please, Bada Brava, do not insult me and do this. 75th minute, <laughs> 2 nothing the score. The fans enjoying life. That's right, that's right. I go along, man. Ball back. Campana steps in to steal. Near side, Alba. Long down the line, and Gomez first touch. Driving on Melanda to the inside. Ruiz now stepping into the attack. Off to Messi. Messi drives, left foot, top of the arc. Sees the run of Alba, tries to oh. split it through. Blocked by Vargas, outlet for the Colombian, and a side tackle by the Ecuadorian Arroyo, and he wins the throw-in. Nice. And, and Leo Messi actually puts his hands in his face and knows the ball was on, quite frankly. And that's a, a needle that he normally threats so easily. Leo is, is human. Thank God. <laughs> Are you positive? He might have just no, been trying to make us listen, feel good. At the end of the day, if he doesn't score today, he went to nothing. That's a plus because we relied so heavily on Messi. Now you can win games with Messi not being in the greatest form, maybe, which is progress for this team. Vargas trying to go down the line, blocked by Arroyo, out for a Charlotte throw, and Tata Martino clapping his hands ferociously, applauding the increase in intensity. That's what you want from your subs. Yep. So it's good to don't have a messy dependency. That's what you're trying to say, Thomas? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Messy uh, dependency, exactly. <laughs> Which Barca for a while was. Let's be real honest. And Argentina, too. Yeah. Si, senor. What was that, you know, when you need it, break the glass? I mean, they were crawling on broken glass for a while. Oh, yeah. Nice metaphor. 76th minute. I mix them around sometimes. Far side for Swiderski. Inside for Westwood. It was a song from Annie Lennox also, walking in uh, broken glass. Near right. side Vargas, the Colombian over enthusiastic past Bronico. Alba gets it from Miller, back for Kipsoff inside the Miami area. Yedlin staying back. Again with a 2 nothing lead, he can. Far side is Ruiz, but he couldn't keep it in play. It'll be a throw in for Charlotte, about 30 yards away. From the goal to the right, Miami. Almost an Ancelotti like Christmas tree in front of Callender, who's at the top of his six. Ball back at midfield for Charlotte. Adilson Malanda. Nice from Jalen Lindsay. Cutting to the inside. Bronico. Out wide to Jaeger. Ajaman's camped out near the spot with three pink jerseys around him. Westwood. Lindsay. Vargas. High in the air. Calendar can't get it, but headed by Ajaman down into the ground, and it bounces over the crossbar. He should have had it. Well, close, but no cigar. Now, I said... Since the start of his second half, Phil, that Charlotte really has created some opportunities more through Havoc and, again, playing balls from out wide in the central areas. And that's a great opportunity missed by Charlotte, keeping this at 2-1. Yetland just gets a piece of him. That was enough. Look at that. Ball out wide, but it will bounce away from Ruiz. It was a good position by Bronico as he got camped between the two center backs. They're both worried about him and the six foot four Ajiman had the goal to his mercy. Westwood trying to swing it away. Campana flies into steel. Spins for Busquets. Off to Messi. Through for Gomez. Right foot to the middle for Campana. But it's tucked by a defender and for the second straight goal. Miami pressure leads to an own goal. 3 nothing Harris. Inter Miami! Bring the fireworks, guys! As a former player, David Beckham on the sideline, almost a sheepish celebration. It's happened to everyone. And you got to feel for Addison Malanda. He tried to get his body in the way. 
The problem was the net was the next step beyond. Yeah, but you know what, Phil? If you are proactive and aggressive and get into the 18-yard box, dribble penetration, crosses, you put a defender's feet there under a lot of duress. And sooner or later you go, I gotta leave my feet because this guy's behind me. And then own goals will occur. I give more credit to Inter Miami. Again, messy driving at the heart, finding an overlapping player. The hard run by the substitute, Diego Gomez, forces the mistake. Forces the old goal, three nothing, game over. Three nothing. I'm losing score. my voice slowly. <laughs> <laughs> Great pass from Messi, though, and also good ball from Alba to the middle. And if it hadn't been touched by Melanda, Campana was right in yeah. position to pounce. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so again, what you're talking about, people complained about Barcelona, and even now with Messi with Miami into the middle for Westwood plays it square for Jalen Lindsay now near side Vargas. Tries to get the cross in, blocked by Gomez. People complain about those teams getting all the penalties. Why? Because they're in the other area making things happen. Absolutely. Same way you get own goals, Thomas. Yeah. 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 Own goals in the last two games, both Dallas and Charlotte, and that's due to the fact that Inter Miami is, as you said, so proactive in the way they... Ajaman against Miller, who gets the touch into the middle, but behind the Jaeger, top of the box... Chance for Swiderski, blocked away by Yedlin. Flying out, Busquets to defense. Swiderski, and he got more of Ruiz. Down comes Gomez with the ball. Ruiz pops to his feet, flips for Messi, leaves it for Ruiz, and now it's an all-out jailbreak. Vamos, Cabrato, vamos! Ruiz across midfield, down for Campana. Gomez making an inside run, off to the Paraguayan, shoots, blocked away by Kalina, and spins out for the corner. That's the danger of trying to lock down the Heron. F- FYI, that's Leo Campana, David Ruiz, and Mr. Gomez, the three substitutions who have fresh legs. They can go places. And now putting squarely the pressure back on Charlotte. Very good in-game <laughs> substitutions by Tata Martino. Very unselfish from Campana. Eh? What a Sizio. nice pass. Corner kick up coming for Inter Miami with <laughs> nine minutes left in regulation. Messi to take it. Their second of the half, third of the game. It's a lot of laughs here because McVay almost fall in and everybody was making jokes out of it. I want to ask you one question in a second, Fernando, about that last goal. But we might get another one here. Alba, delicately, Campana, Seto, side volley, but right to Kalina. He's starting to feel it, Thomas. Yeah, he certainly does. And and, and, and Leo needs a goal right now. Let's yep. be real honest. Joseph pretty much in the last three games has scored. Important for Leo as well. If he looks over his shoulder, lets a ball go, a dummy, Messi's wide open. But I understand the number nine in the Xavi 80 yard box wants to go to goal. Pressure and by needs to be Campana, selfish. by the way, ended up winning the ball back, but Miami gives it to Charlotte as they step to midfield. Another substitution about to check in for Charlotte FC. Get to that in a moment. Looks like it's Cambridge, the Canadian. Final roll of the dice for Latanzio. Top of the box, Westwood with a little touch. Blocked away Ruiz. Good hold by Campana. 2v1 if they hurry. Arroyo didn't hear the footsteps, and Westwood saves a break. Charlotte pushing forward, looking for a goal of honor, but Miller in the way to deny Ajiman, and Busquets not to the turf by De Jaeger. Nothing intentional, but they're throwing their bodies in the way of Charlotte. You, you can, if you're Tata Martino, you, you can write a better script. The only thing they need right now is keep a shutout. Key, win 3 nothing. Leo doesn't score, which again is, is progress because Leo will <laughs> score many goals going forward. Talking about goals, they've scored now 16 goals in five games. Into Miami before Messi scored 22 goals in 22 games. Crazy, the turnaround, the plus-minus which I look at in hockey, and I look at that plus minus as well. Which line is plus, which line is minus? Well, this line is doing a pretty darn good. The plus 10 right now. By the way, the man that stepped in has a busy passport. Brandon Cambridge, born in Brooklyn, like so many soccer players in the headlines of late, but moved to South Africa, then to Florida, then to Saskatchewan, and now a Canadian international and a member of Charlotte FC. Nice turn by the fellow Canadian, Kamal Miller, Whoa. and a one-touch fourth, by Alba. Fourth, <laughs> Alba, well, 
building tunnels yeah. in the field of drive pink. Messi with a little turn. Holy. Yedlin with Gomez on his inside. Campana begging. Long cross for Ruiz. Not quite long enough. Off to the near side. The kick from Little Havana makes the turn. Drives inside to the goal line. Tries to drop it, but blocked away. Now cleared to midfield, and they'll find Ajiman. Four pink jerseys around the big man from Connecticut. Finally has his teammate Swiderski out wide. The pole to the middle, and he'll be forced to regroup, but his pass intercepted by Gomez. There's the intensity you were talking about. Great recovery. And, and by the way, there's eight guys at Charlotte right now that can bridge 30, 40 yards to support the They're done physically, <laughs> which this heat, this humidity, yes, this is home field advantage. I know it. I've played here. It's so tough. You're running to this brick wall around this time, 75th, 80th minutes. And I'm telling you, I was a fit player. And when I went for the hundredth time past my guy, by the way, smiling, and he couldn't <laughs> keep up with me, I went, all right, this is good. So I'm you're telling fit. me we're hoping for a heat wave in Philadelphia. <laughs> Victor Uyo is coming in. Ah, muy bien. Mr. Lockdown, hopefully. By the way, 87th minute, Nashville still 5 nothing over a shorthanded Minnesota, Philadelphia, 10 minutes into the second, leading Carretero. That LAFC Monterey game can't miss. That gets underway around 10.30 Eastern. And that could be the final. Number 13 is going in. And Noah Allen is also going in. Well, Last window of substitutions. Two more for Inter Miami. Might be Busquets and Alba to a hero's exit. Absolutely brilliant. So you start... Benja Kramansky, you come back with David Ruiz, another young local player. You give Noel and another academy product a sniff again. Good management by Tata Martino here. Gotta keep them hungry. experience and continue to bleed youth in, or at least give them some minutes with the big boys. Yep. Long ball of Leo. Sneaks it through. Oh, oh. Messi just made the defense disappear. Oh. Into the middle for Campana. Bangs around off the two defenders, and Campana tracks it down. Ruiz behind. Campana squares. Good perfect. Yeah. He's done yeah. again. And Leo Campana with a silver plate in service. Inter Miami. Messi, Campana, Campana, Messi. What a goal. I mean, let's take a bow here. The ball that Messi brings down, the switcher point of attack is absolutely brilliant. The pass thereafter might even be better to Leo Campana. And on Leo has the patience to scan the field and find Leo with the easy left footer tap in. Leo on the board for nothing. Wow, life is good, Bill Shea. Well, he got Martinez involved earlier, both as an assist and from the spot. He's helping Campana get involved. Remember, this started with him trying to beat Campana, who was making a run in the 87th minute, leading 3-0, yep. and then gets the ball and has the composure to wait for the messy run. 4 nothing. Miami's cruising. And check that celebration by Messi. Before he was four, then he was the... Black Panther, and today was the Spider-Man, El Hombre Araña. I'm waiting for Captain America, or at least Captain Argentina. Spider-Man today, my friends. Ulloa out for Arroyo. Allen for Jordi Alba, who gets a standing ovation. And let me tell you something, every single player went to congratulate and embrace Leo Campana. He needed that, a little love. So the kid from Pembroke Pines out to close things down, and Victor Uyola, the first Inter-Miami player, stepping onto the field, 4 nothing Miami. So now we need Gallos Blancos of Querétaro to win so we can play here the semifinal. Come on, Gallos Blancos. Kick, kick, kick. Still just one nothing Philadelphia. An equalizer and penalties could turn it around, so you might not want to book that trip to Chester just yet. Maybe, might be drive pink again. Maybe somebody can go to work and tell me 
Which MLS player in his first five games for his new club scored eight or more goals? Because Messi is at eight goals right now in five. Let me I check. don't think there's anybody. <laughs> Let me check in Wikipedia. <laughs> si, si, senor. Check it out. Out far side for Cambridge, who was the player that was victimized by Messi on that turn. And again, you talk about it. This is key. Ruiz coming in, making things happen. Gomez, Campana. Now we'll see if Ulloa and Allen can follow suit. In for Messi. Out to the center circle. Campana holding his run. Messi drives, dishes. Gomez! Goes far post, but down goes Kalina. <laughs> what a great run by Messi, man. Are you sure he's 36? And again, the fresh legs allow Gomez to go there, which previously didn't happen. So messi got some great options when he starts that dribble penetration centrally, which causes every defender to go, oh, my God. Nashville has closed out their 5 nothing win against Minnesota. The fans Messi. starting to chant, Messi, Messi. Messi, Messi. Eight shots, six on goal, four have gone in. Those are a tight cluster of bullseyes for Inter-Miami. You saw Ajiman after the goal just kicking the turf in frustration. Charlotte put their hearts on the field here at Drive Pink, and Messi stomped on them. Laid off Westwood. Making the run, Cambridge. Right-footed cross, blocked away by his compatriot, Miller. Only as far as Westwood, back for Cambridge. Two more minutes. Cambridge to the goal line, a chip across, touched away. Busquets playing some defense. Two minutes indeed have been added. Thanks, Fernando. Back for Westwood. He'll retreat. Looking privet out wide. Charlotte just wants that goal of honor, that consolation to take home. A takedown and a yellow card as Busquets gets chipped in the heels by the Jaeger. Or actually, was it Westwood? Now, remember, and Tata Martino better, This, these two teams are going to meet again in MLS. They're playing so well in League's Cup. Open Cup. They're one win away from the final. Can you really say that the playoffs are out of reach? No. You can't. No. No. But with this team right now, we <laughs> yeah, if you're smart, if you talk to Martino and the staff, you look at it, okay, we're, we're in two competitions, one game away from a potential final, and, and you got to choose between resting the guys in MLS prior to a game, that's it. But eight, nine wins out of 12 is doable for this team. And again, Charlotte might be one of those teams, could be the finale in Charlotte. Long ball near side, Gomez dropping it back, Ulloa's first touch. 91 30 about 30 seconds left busquets wearing the number five and at the pivot back for Uyoa. they'll retreat is messi doing the x spider uh, celebration yeah i told you man i know spider-man so from wakanda no first it was thor yeah it is first thor you're right thor then and the final wakanda. whistle from ismail elfa Lionel messi with the cherry on top of a 4 nothing showdown against Charlotte. Fernando down on the field. Well, the teams congratulating each other for a good night, but it was good night to Charlotte early on. Yes, absolutely. And this was a, a wonderful, wonderful performance in the first half. And uh, so, so performance until everything changes with two goals from Inter Miami. Everybody's going out to the midfield. The security guards are on position as always. And the North Stand is going crazy, waving the flag and having a great time. Another 4 0, another clean sheet for Calendar. What a wonderful night. Bring the fireworks, my friends. And Thomas, one of the first people that Busquets went to congratulate Drake Calendar because at the start of the second half, when it was just 2 0, Calendar kept the clean sheet and allowed the late game explosion. Absolutely. They had to work through some rough patches for 20 minutes. And Tata made some changes, and all of a sudden, the energy was back. But a very professional performance capped off again by a messy goal, which is his eighth in five games. They've won five straight. They're scoring goals for fun right now. 
This is this is a team that's now very very dangerous. Regardless who they play going forward, that might be away against Philly. I hope somehow there's a comeback in the books that we have another home game here. But regardless where they go now, they got that first win in Dallas on the road to travel. So Messi and company understands what it takes to go on the plane and to be in different hotels away from your family. Brilliant. And again, they go into the Legion, the Bada Brav, whomever, to thank them as well, which they've done every game. And the crowds, clearly, very much. I mean, Pele played here. I played with some of the greatest here. I've never seen an adoration for a player, and correctly so, for probably the greatest all time in Leo Messi. And South Florida is taken to this team. Here comes the team. As close as they can, because it's a lot of security guards that they don't let them go further than that. Top They're the clapping 18, to everybody here. Southern Legion, Vice City, Siege. Fernando, we cannot discount the mood of that end of the stadium oh, yeah. six weeks ago. This was a team where the fans were starting to wonder what was going to happen. But when the team stepped up, the fans have stepped up, and... It has been absolutely electric. Well, let me tell you something, uh, Phil. These fans are true fans, man. They are here in the good times. They were here with the bad times. They were here cheering and chanting and singing and waving flags when the team was losing game after game after game in that infamous street. So now they're having a great time. Now everybody is clapping and, and, and waving and hugging each other. I love that. I've been with the fans since day one. I'm part of this wonderful familia, and I'm so glad to see them happy now. Well, I'm going to make you happier because as we head towards the post-game yes! show, Gallos! Gallos! 65th minute in Chester, Philadelphia won, Carretero won, Angel Sepulveda yes! with the equalizer. We'll see what happens, and we'll keep you up to date. The final score from Drive Pink, Miami 4, Charlotte nothing. Stay with us. <laughs> You've been listening to all the action of Inter-Miami CF on the home of Inter-Miami. AM 790, FM 104.3, HD2, The Ticket, and streaming on the Odyssey app. Finding great candidates to hire can be like, well trying to find a needle in a haystack. Sure, you can post your job to some job board, but then all you can do is hope the right person comes along, which is why you should try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash free. ZipRecruiter doesn't depend on candidates finding you. Its powerful technology identifies people with the right experience and actively invites them to apply to your job. You get qualified candidates fast. So while other companies might deliver a lot of hay, ZipRecruiter finds you what you're looking for. The needle in the haystack. Four out of five employers who post a job in ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate through the site within the first day. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. And right now you can try ZipRecruiter for free. That's right, free. Just go to this exclusive web address, ZipRecruiter.com slash free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. ZipRecruiter.com slash free. Finding great candidates to hire can be like, well, trying to find a needle in a haystack, but not with ZipRecruiter. Its powerful technology actively finds and invites qualified candidates to apply to your job. So while other companies might deliver a lot of hay, ZipRecruiter finds you the needle in the haystack. See why four out of five employers who post a job on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. Try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. Jim Gaffigan here with some more straight talk. Let's take a moment to appreciate our sweet children, loving grandparents, and eternal soulmates. Now let's use them to save money on wireless. Because with the Straight Talk Silver Plan, you get four lines for just $25 a month with unlimited data and no contracts. So add those human pawns, I mean loved ones, and save money. Thanks, kids. They're finally worth it. Straight Talk Wireless, available at Walmart. Get four lines on Silver Unlimited for $25 per line per month, plus taxes and fees. For data management practices and additional terms, visit straighttalk.com. This is the Inter-Miami CF Post Game Show. A recap of today's action on AM 790, FM 104.3, HD2, The Ticket, and streaming on the Odyssey app. 
Welcome back to Fly Panther fans taking their time exiting today, savoring every step. And Fernando Fiore down on the sidelines. Let's spare a thought for the Charlotte Reserves. Not only did they have to witness this from the bench and not have any part, now they have to go and sprint in front of the Victoria.